Hello and welcome to something different um, on my channel. So I thought, you know what, let me take a break from making those gaming videos every night and let me try and focus and do other things as well. So um, this is you know, hopefully the first part of an amazing podcast series I have where I just discuss random stuff that comes into my mind. And this is kind of a weird place to start, but bear with me and I'll explain um, my thinking, my reasoning. So recently I've been looking at uh, flat earth videos and to be more specific more like flat earth debunking videos now initially it was just a bit of fun I mean I mean just like everyone else I thought well, I would like I think earth is flat it's just so obviously not but I still found it interesting and I found it interesting for a few reasons um, the first one is of course you know, why would someone think it's flat um, there's so much evidence that goes against it it's like it's one of those few things in science where Usually in science, we have, as you know, scientific theories, but those are things that we've adopted um, and, or if, if there's a theory that um, we believe is true, so it's something that we've adopted and we generally think it's quite true unless it's um, otherwise falsified. But for that reason, we don't really go in science and say this thing is objectively true. But the shape of the Earth, that it being, well, I say round or globe, but I mean an oblate spheroid, um, but the shape of the Earth is something that is, like, we consider it true. It's one of those rare things in science. Like, obviously, we have other theories where, you know, we never know evidence in the future might disprove it. But this is one of the things that we definitely know is true. But either way, um, I did want to know why would anyone believe it. And that is where, you know, where my interest lies in just seeing why they believe it, how they believe it, their methods that they use to um, defend their beliefs and um, what they think. So first of all, let me give you some background about myself. So essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm studying biology. So I just finished my first year studying biology. I want to go into more ecology, conservation, um, data analysis, etc. But saying that, I have like some physics background. So physics I know is basic obviously in terms of just physics in general, but I have like an understanding of it. So if someone explained to me a physics concept, I'll be able to link it back to what I know and hopefully build on my understanding. But either way, I'm familiar with how science works, the scientific method, um, how we arrive at our conclusions, etc., um, which is quite dissimilar to many flat earthers, but um, let's talk about that later. So my interests really are with the flat earthers, how they put forward their arguments. So basically, why they think the earth is flat and what they say to make others um, believe the earth is flat as well. Um, but then also how people refute them. So, you know, how you debunk the flat earth and then how they respond, uh, respond to those refutations. And what this shows, the more you look at it, it's quite interesting. What this shows is... Um, there is an issue, there is a problem with, uh, well, basically our society in general and um, education, etc. So, I suppose let's get started in how they put forward their arguments. So, um, I've done, you know, like I said, I have watched a fair few videos and so I'm familiar with the faces and their arguments and, you know, sometimes they say it in kind of a convincing way. But the main things they say is, um, it's common sense that the Earth is flat. And they have observations to um, support this. And um, their observations and their common sense um, can be said to be real science. So that is real science, they're the ones doing it, and everything else that is science that refutes this and like I said it's one of the things that we know for certain like the fact that we've been talking about this science that's the reason why scientists won't go and debunk them because it's like such a silly idea to them like how can you even think that when we have overwhelming evidence um, but apparently according to the fat earthers it's not real science so some observations they say is they can't see the curvature so that is true if you go on a really flat plane or on the sea, um, you won't be able to look down. All you can see is just everything completely flat. Uh, and something else they refute as well, because obviously, globe Earth, um, 
it says that we are spinning, we're traveling quite fast as well. Um, and so once we do the maths, it turns out we're actually our linear um, speed, especially at the, well, at the equator, is quite high. And obviously, Fatah would say, uh, well, I don't feel it. And again, that's true. We don't feel the however thousands of miles per hour, if that's that we are spinning. And we don't see ourselves hurtling through the Milky Way at a ridiculous speed as well, the whole solar system. And God knows how fast the Milky Way is moving, but it certainly is quite fast. And, you know, once you're presented with that, you think, okay, well, fine. Those are decent arguments, maybe. But only if you just look at that evidence. There is far more uh, that you can be told and far more observations you can make that will refute this. And so we should now talk about refutations or how people debunk the flat earth. And so first I will um, give the arguments against what I just said and then I'll say how in general or like the common trends with how these are debunked. So can't see curvature. Well, the obvious answer to that is we are quite small compared to how large the Earth is. And what people don't realise is that the crust where we are and the atmosphere up towards space is actually a very tiny um, small part of the Earth. So let me see if I can get to the numbers up, but the Earth is huge, huge. And obviously we won't be able to see the curvature. Let me see if I can get the numbers up. Uh, okay, so here we are. Crust is 5 to 70 kilometers thick, which is, you know, fairly thick. The mantle is around about uh, nearly 3,000 kilometers thick, and the core is nearly 3,500 kilometers thick. So obviously you can see there, that's a very small percentage. Well, it's not that small, but it's a small percentage of the Earth. So we often um, don't realize just quite how large the earth is and so we expect to see this occur when in reality we are literally well there's another comparison made but i think the valleys and the mountains of the earth's surface um if you took the earth and made it small you wouldn't be able to feel it would be completely smooth or smoother than um a pool ball or what do you call it also snooker ball so obviously um that's an easy debunk for that observation and it's something that you'd expect as well. There's, there's nothing um, weird about that. And now what about not being able to feel spin? Well, um, that's where conservation of momentum comes in. Just like we wouldn't be able to, um, if I was in a moving train and I jump up, I wouldn't be landing at the back of the carriage. I'll actually land right where I jumped from. That's if I was jumping up. Obviously, if I jump forward, then I go forward. If I jump back, I go back. Um, and similarly on the Earth, if we're rotating at a constant speed, then if I throw a ball, it should land, if I throw a ball directly up, it should land directly down, unless obviously there's wind, etc. And bearing in mind as well that the Earth's rotation is not that much, it's like 15 degrees um, per hour, uh, which is obviously barely noticeable, if noticeable at all. And we can also measure this rotation as well using multiple instruments, which is actually done by a flat earther himself. But um, we can talk about that later. Um, but the one thing that's really seen by these debunks is that people who debunk no science, people who put forward the flat earth theories don't know science, because these concepts here are pretty basic concepts. Conservation of momentum is hardly groundbreaking, and it's a like I said, it's a pretty simple thing. It's not you don't even need to know like all the mathematical theories and equations behind it. It's quite like you can easily do it. You jump up on a train, you land where you jumped. But um obviously fat earthers um still believe that. Uh, it's not just as if you know you put forward the scientific consensus or scientific evidence against what they're saying, um, and then they um relinquish their belief and move on. So the refutations uh, are, or response to debunks is really lacking in scientific evidence. Um, it's, it, you find it quite difficult to uh, find evidence against the conservation of momentum because it doesn't exist. 
and the fact of the matter is if you jump up in a moving train you go back down um, if you jump back in a moving train let's say if you're in a moving train and you um, travel 70 miles the train's going 70 miles per hour it's if you can like if you jump up from your position and you jump back then you jump back but surely then by a factor of the closet you should be jumping back at a faster spe uh, speed than 70 miles per hour and obviously you know uh, no one can jump 70 miles per hour that's quite fast and uh, there is ne really no refutation to this you can't really argue against it um so that is one key point of how um, they respond to the debunks. There's really no scientific ev um, evidence or no scientific discussion. Um, often there's scientific misunderstandings. So, um, for example, the one that's often used is a misunderstanding of gravity. Because really gravity is something that is um, hard to explain, hard to theorise about um, for physicists. But the fact is it's measurable we can clearly see an effect and it quite clearly exists and we can and we have equations that um, predict to extremely high accuracy how objects behave um, and the gravitational effects and so one of the misunderstandings is um, whether it's an effect or a force and disparity between how um, Newton, I won't say even describe gravity, but how Newton presented gravity and how Einstein presented gravity as if they're two different things and they use that as evidence that it doesn't exist. Obviously there are many logical um, fallacies uh, and leaps they make there and overall it's just a huge misunderstanding of science but um, that is basically what they're doing, they're misunderstanding science and one other key point that I would like to mention at this point as well is that their response to these debunks often um, go back to their own observations. So it goes something like this. Uh, well, how can you... So Fatat would say, well, how can you explain a spinning ball if I can't feel it spinning? Response is uh, conservation momentum. The Fatat would then say, well, listen, okay, I can't feel it spinning. If I look out... I see a flat horizon, I see everything flat. And that is really uh, what they do. They just go back to their own observations, any observations or any scientific experiments that are made that refute their claim. They immediately claim that either it is not real science or um, that they weren't there. Why are you trusting this science? The way they say it can be quite convincing. I'm often being half convinced by the arguments they make and you know observations they make that I'm like hmm that is true you know um but the more you think about it the more you realize that this belief is quite absurd and silly and the reason why that is is because literally every scientific thing we ever know or well, I say literally virtually every scientific advancement that we've made in every space exploration etc um, is you know based upon the fact that the Earth is round and other things that um round Earth is based on. So, for example, we have gravity, and I mean, so fact, gravity means that you can't have a flat Earth because what would happen is the edges of a flat Earth would be attracted to each other, and then they get scrunched up and make guess what, a spheroid shape. Um, but gravity is one of the things that we have modelled to extremely high precision. Um, we even back in Newton's days when uh, we used um, or when he came up with the gravitational equations, which I learned a few of back in school, um, we used those to great effects. I believe that we launched spacecraft. We found all of um, all, um, all of our space exploration used that, and then obviously Einstein came along and refined them a bit um, for more extreme cases. But um, as seen from us using it. Gravity is obviously real. There's no way you can refute that. And we even build planes out of it as well. It's not as if you can say there's a huge conspiracy um, that says, oh, well, gravity isn't real. And instead, um, the powers that be do all these roundabout things that pretend that gravity exists, but instead they're using buoyancy force or whatever um, stuff that Flat Earth has used to um, explain the gravitational effects that we see because you can literally using the theory of aerodynamics and how a plane uh, 
functions, which is based on gravity, you can build your own plane. Obviously, it won't be an amazing jet fighter, but you can use the concepts and you can see that, well, gravity is a thing. And you can also make your own experiments that show uh, rotation of the Earth, um, curvature, etc., etc. And so it's quite silly to actually like even think of such um, a theory if you can even call it a theory that disproves everything that we know and like I said before the shape of the earth is one of the few things that we know with certainty in science like this is, you you can't even like begin to imagine that oh, maybe the earth is actually flattish or not round it's something that we know for certain and it's something that has been proven over and over again and it's actually one of the baselines of science. So we assume that the Earth is round whenever we do anything in science. That obviously requires us to have that assumption. Um, but uh, obviously, people still believe that the Earth is flat. Now, why is that? Well, there are two things really that I've uh, kind of observed. Um, it's distrust in authority and lack of critical thinking. So, uh, distrust in authority. Actually, let's do critical thinking first. Um, it's clear that these people don't understand what science is, how to perform science, and just science in general. Because like I've explained, there's so much that we know that clearly refutes um, the Earth being flat. Gravity is one example. Everything that we know in physics that can be... Uh, easily replicated we don't need to have like millions of pounds or billions of pounds worth of scientific equipment but everything that we know uh, you can do is based on the fact that the earth is round or it doesn't it's not even based on the fact the earth is round but the earth is round the earth can't, cannot be any other shape similarly with all the other observations and it takes a lot to look at the evidence and deny it and that's um, one key problem that they have is just a lack of uh, critical thinking and not understanding how science works. But the other one, like I said, is distrust. And that's a, another huge issue. Um, and it's another thing that fat earthers um, almost always have. That's why it's seen as a conspiracy theory, because in order for it to be flat, there needs to be some kind of conspiracy. Um, but unlike other conspiracy theories, which like I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but... I can say maybe there's some stuff that's been going on that's fishy. I'm not saying the royal family is are all lizards, but there are some things that have been a bit fishy um, with uh, with governments, etc. But this conspiracy theory is absurd. And it's well multiple things, but magnitude. So, as many fat earthers are based in America uh, or the USA, to be more precise, um, one government agency or one you know, agency that lies to them, as they say, is NASA. Um, but the thing is, it's not only NASA that believes in uh, the Earth being round. It is virtually every scientist ever. Well, I say virtually, it is every scientist ever. Um, so we can go to the other space agencies, like European, Japanese, uh, India's also doing some stuff, China as well. So... Obviously, they're all lying to us, despite them. Actually, they do collude together often. But politically, for example, China and the USA aren't really the best of friends right now. Uh, they haven't really been in the past, but yet they are still colluding on this um, huge, huge conspiracy. But it's not only that. Um, every person who practices physics, so all the observations that they've been doing that go with this, nah, it's wrong. They're also um, this part of, uh, in part of the conspiracy. Um, every physicist ever to exist previously, I mean, the Earth has been known to be around for a very, very long time. Observations have been made a very, very long time um, showing that the Earth is round and predicting actually its diameter to a fairly high um, degree. So, no, they're part of the conspiracy as well. In fact, everyone who isn't uh, who doesn't believe in the flat earth is either part of conspiracy or is uh, has been led like sheep and it's it's difficult to explain but that's like huge huge distrust and it's quite weird actually to 
distrust everyone that doesn't believe in you uh, believe um, what you believe and it's also like I find it quite like weird and also interesting that they are willing to literally forgo every piece of science that goes against what they say and just go with their own observations but that is actually a huge huge issue um why is it an issue well to be fair i don't particularly care if someone believes that the earth is flat um if you want to do that up to you knock yourself out as it were um i personally like having the earth as a globe and space being real etc but ultimately if for example my neighbor or someone I worked with, or someone I knew, one of my friends was a flat earther. Obviously, I laugh at them. How can you not? But it doesn't really affect me in any other way. But um, the distrust or the conspiracy, when I say conspiracy, I don't mean in like the small conspiracy, I mean the conspiracy in like of a huge magnitude. But distrust and conspiracy and lack of critical thinking do not make a good combination for us as a society. Uh, and the obvious issue that we have is anti-vax and anti-vax people, people that think that vaccinations cause autism or um, else bad. So I can break down the anti-vax um, argument similarly to the flat Earth ones. Um, this is something I'm more um, interested in and I'm more familiar with, seeing as it's biology. Um, but essentially, anti-vaxxers, like I said, don't believe in vaccines. Now history of vaccines because vaccines are one of like our scientific um great scientific achievements although you might not think so because you know we kind of become complacent in living with them but we've obviously had some pretty amazing scientific achievements for example our space exploration landing on the moon especially with the technology at that time like once you start to realize it you really think wow that has been a significant achievement vaccinations have also been quite significant uh and they have done a lot for us like the single thing that's saved the most lives so what vaccines are obviously are chemicals that in some way train your um, body to be able to fight a particular disease so they could be for example antibodies or deactivated uh, or weakened viruses etc now it's funny because actually some story time here but the first um vaccination was literally a virus so i believe it was edward jenner let me search this so yes it was edward jenner who came up with the first vaccine and it wasn't anything fancy all he saw was everyone who got cowpox didn't get smallpox and just for some perspective smallpox was a ridiculous disease at that time many pandemics before or i don't say pandemics but definitely epidemics before were caused by smallpox, killed millions and millions and millions. And um, what he saw, which was actually quite an astute observation, is that people who got cowpox didn't get smallpox. And so the natural progression from that is, well, maybe if I give someone cowpox, let's see then if they develop smallpox. And guess what? He tried that one. I think a farm girl, which uh, I don't think that would happen in today's vaccine research. You just pick a random girl off the streets here take this but either way thankfully for us he did that and she got a cowpox sure enough he gave so he gave her cowpox i don't know how i think he just got it from the pus of someone who had it which isn't very nice but either way gave her cowpox she got cowpox she recovered from cowpox because cowpox wasn't a fatal disease i believe um then think he gave her smallpox and she didn't get smallpox um and so modern vaccines use this kind of um theory where we train the body to fight a particular disease or multiple diseases if the vaccines are grouped together and like i said they are incredibly successful so smallpox which like i said killed millions of people before no longer a threat completely wiped i think the only um places where there's smallpox is um labs in russia and the us i think i don't know if those are rumors or not because i can't really verify that but i believe those are Maybe not for biological warfare, but in case somehow um, comes back in the general population, they have some strains that they can do research on to develop a strategy to counter it. But that's the smallpox vaccine. Obviously now we've eradicated smallpox 
and we've eradicated, I think, I don't know if we've eradicated polio or we're close to eradicating it, but that's something else that we've managed to significantly, significantly reduce the impact of. But obviously we have other things um, that we're trying to uh, reduce, so things um, or diseases like um, measles, etc. And vaccines are really the best way of doing so. And the more you th- look at like how a virus works, it's not like a bacteria. So bacteria, bacteria and viruses are worlds apart, but at least with the bacteria you can um, give uh, antibiotics. And there are numerous other strategies to fight bacteria. Um, some are quite interesting, such as cutting the genes needed for replication or for survival. Others actually using viruses that are um, that can target a bacteria. Those are far better ways than antibiotics, because antibiotics are causing us a whole host of problems. But either way, enough about um, all the nerdy science. Um, or maybe not so, because antivaxxers don't understand the science. And uh, they say that vaccinations can cause, for example, autism or other health issues. And antivaxxers are a whole other... Um, talking points in themselves, uh, in themselves, there are a few differences between them and flat earthers. For one, they try and um, use emotional arguments such as "my baby was fine," and then got vaccination two days later was completely autistic. Obviously, the more you learn about autism and medicine in general, the more you realise that, wait, hang on a second, that's just like autism apparently develops um, while you're still in the womb, or as in the precursors to autism develop while you're still in the womb, um, so that there's no way that um, the vaccine could have that kind of effect, especially when you consider as well the vaccines are often um, administered in a time where a child becomes more, when I say Vaccines are often some vaccines are often administered in a time where a child becomes more socially capable, and so obviously a caring parent who looks quite carefully at their loving or their loved child's development, if they see any issue with how they interact socially, easily try or I won't say easily try, but immediately try and put the blame on something. So they're trying to um, bring in a link between vaccines and autism or other stuff. Let's talk about autism first. Um, but there has been no link at all found between vaccines and autism. And this isn't something that one paper has found. Literally every, like, proper scientific paper that hasn't been pulled back has said vaccines and autism, well, they're not linked. Vaccines do not cause autism at all. And there are other arguments as well for anti-vaccine, uh, vaxxers. So, for example, uh, the pumping chemicals in the body, and this is actually such an empty argument because there are two things that really, um, well, actually, it's one thing really that really determines whether the chemical is harmful or not, and that is its toxicity. So, what it does and what volume it needs to be, or what, um, not volume, well, volume, yes, but concentration needs to be in order for it to actually have a harmful effect. And virtually everything can have a harmful effect. Even oxygen. Oxygen is one of the most toxic things that a body has to deal with. Um, and if you are fed pure, pure, pure oxygen, I've heard that it can cause issues in the long run. But no one talks about oxygen being a public health hazard. The same with other things as well. Water. If you drink a lot of it, you will die. And other things as well. So obviously dosage is very important. And once you realise that, for example... Uh, commonly eaten foods and drinks have more aluminium than um, a vaccine, then you realise uh, it's not that important. And you can see that uh, there is a quite an interesting, well, I won't say interesting, but quite a huge misunderstanding on, and lack of understanding of science within those anti-vaxxers. So, for example, they'd complain about um, mercury or some other poisonous compound or chemical in the vaccines, and obviously this is important. But those compounds are often, um, or those chemicals are often part of a compound. They don't care because it's in the name. But um, what happens is the chemical, which would normally be fairly toxic, because it's bound to another chemical or to another atom, it's far less toxic. So, for example, uh, chlorine, um, poisonous gas. It's not nice to breathe in, but we eat it every day as sodium chloride. Is sodium chloride the same as chlorine? No. So should it be treated the same? 
know. Um, but obviously, anti-vaccine or people who don't like vaccines are huge, huge public health risks. So it's not like that earthers where you can laugh at and you can ignore and nothing would happen really. But those are like a pretty big, significant public health risk. Um, I believe there are now um, outbreaks of measles in several parts where really, if we were all on it, if we had a good um, vaccine program, we could have eradicated measles. I don't know in what time frame, but it would have definitely been possible. Um, but unfortunately, people are not using critical thinking skills and being too distrustful of anything or not trusting anything and instead just going for it and not vaccinating their kids and therefore having their kids be a vector of the disease to people who are vulnerable and can't be vaccinated. And this is obviously a huge, huge issue. And what's even more annoying or infuriating about this issue is that there is literally, well I won't say literally, but there is virtually no scientific evidence behind this. So like I said, a whole host of papers that um, discredit the link between vaccines and autism. And then we have multiple other papers and multiple loads of, loads of scientists who work on the vaccines, spend years and years trying to make it safe for public consumption. And people who have very little, if not any, understanding of science still think that they know more about the science that these people are studying, more than people who are studying them themselves. Um, so this is it's quite ridiculous, but not only is it quite ridiculous, but it's also um, very damaging to, like I said, our public health. And we see this um, in more recent times, people who don't want to wear masks saying that it, I mean, where, where do I start? Saying that it impacts their breathing, even though it's been demonstrated multiple times that it doesn't, that people can wear them for hours on end. In fact, like literal surgeons and doctors wear them for hours on end. It's just a piece of cloth. Well, so, um, the whole freedom thing is a whole other topic, but I don't want to talk about politics um, too much here. And so this is why I'm saying that beliefs such as flat earth, whilst harmless in themselves, really show that there is a huge issue with this because um, there is obviously the link between flat earthers and other conspiracy theory, uh, theories such as um, anti-vax, like I've said, so where people who believe in a flat earth will also be more inclined to believe in that. But it's just in general, the lack of trust in, uh, um, well, the government, authority, etc. Now, I just want to make it clear, that I don't mean that we should trust everything the government does, but you can't be too distrusting, and you need to have some critical thinking. So, for example, you can say, I don't want to think about, I can't think of a conspiracy theory that has been um, shown to be true, but that it was probably um, a more local conspiracy theory, so something that was contained to a small amount of people, but it's still leaked. But, the flat earth conspiracy theory really means that there's millions and millions of people who are somehow into this conspiracy, somehow get something which um, me, um, uh, keeps them uh, keeps their mouth shut and means they can't talk about anyone about the real sh- uh, to anyone about the real shape of the earth. And I just think that's quite silly. And this is where the critical thinking comes in. Um, anyone who has good critical thinking skills would look at the evidence, look at what the flat earth. Um, proponents are saying and think, ah, oh, come on, you can't be serious, come on. Um, but for um, people who believe in uh, vaccinations causing autism, causing other medical issues and just not believing them in general, that is a seriously harmful thing. And again, anyone who um, has a bit of trust in authority, like I said, not too much trust. They should always be critical of what um, people in power are doing, just so you don't get abused. Um, but anyone has some trust in authority, but also, quite importantly, can critically um, apply their thinking to evidence, can see that, well, vaccinations are okay. Some may have some side effects, but um, there are methods and ways of preventing the impact of those. But in general... They have, like I said, allowed us to um, obliterate smallpox, and they are literally our number one way of fighting viruses. Like, there is no other way of fighting viruses apart from just having your body deal with it. And I will be seen with other viruses, sometimes, like, a body won't be able to cope, so it's best to give it the training um, ahead of time and um, 
Therefore, if you get infected with, say, measles, then you'd be able to fight it off without any huge ill effects. So, just to conclude, that is why I think that flat earth believers are a huge problem in our society, or a symptom of a huge problem in our society. They're not a huge problem, really. But just the lack of critical thinking and their distrust of everything um, should be addressed. Not necessarily with regarding their belief, but regarding um, what it um, could translate to. And people who may not necessarily believe the earth is fat, but may believe that vaccines are pretty harmful, those people are at a huge risk. Now, what can be done about it? Um, well, I don't have all the answers, obviously, but one thing should be done is that in schools, critical thinking and how to apply critical thinking should be taught from a very early age. Now, I believe here in the UK we need an education overhaul, but like I said, I don't want to get into politics too much. And quite frankly, I'm not going to go, go here and come here and say, well, we should change this and that about education. But somehow we need to make critical thinking a more important part of our education, just so, um, well, obviously there's the benefits of having um, people who can critically think in jobs that must be really really good for our economy but also just to prevent um this kind of people so like i said not necessarily flat earthers but people who don't believe in vaccines etc but ha- pre- uh, preventing them from causing any huge issues um in our society so thank you for watching and bearing with me this is a very different video or podcast or whatever as i'm sure you're aware to what i'm usually doing um but I, you know I want to get this off my chest, I wanted to try something new, so thank you for watching, hope you enjoy, and see you soon, goodbye.